Hi. Welcome to You Must Know channel. In this video is designed to give an overview of immunology, so that you understand all the basic features of the immune system. It will also help you to return to this video, once you've already learned the details, so that you can again fit those details back into the bigger picture about how the immune system works. The immune system can be categorized into the innate immune system and the specific immune system. The innate immune system consists of the components that are already at the location of the infection, and respond immediately with a generalized response. The specific immune system involves specialized T and B cells that are waiting in places away from the site of infection and then, when they're activated, they launch a specialized system that fights the specific invading pathogen. The specific immune system takes a little while longer to recognize the infection particularly when a pathogen is invading the body for the first time. So in this video we're going to cover both of these systems, and also talk about a system called the complementary system that works alongside the innate and specific immune systems. Let's look at what happens when a pathogen invades the body. Initially, there are physical barriers that need to be broken before an infection can take place, the skin is an example of one of these barriers most invaders will get stuck at this barrier. However, there are other physical barriers including the mucosa of the respiratory system, the gastrointestinal tract, and the urinary tract. Sometimes an invading pathogen will get through, such as when there is a cut in the skin. There are also chemical barriers that help destroy harmful pathogens before they can cause any infection such as the hydrochloric acid in the stomach, lysozyme in sweat and tears and lactic acid in the vagina. Let's look at the initial responses of the immune system once an invading pathogen has broken through the physical and chemical barriers to infection three things happen. Number 1, macrophages recognize the pathogen and activate the innate immune system. Number 2, dendritic cells pick up antigens from the pathogen and then head off in the blood and lymphatic systems to track down the relevant T and B cells of the specific immune system and activate them. Number 3, the invading pathogen activates the complement system directly via the lectin pathway and the alternative pathway and we'll talk a bit more on those later. First let's look at how the innate immune system provides an immediate response to infection. The first to respond to the macrophages, they recognize pathogens by specific characteristics that occur on pathogens but don't occur on cells of the body, these characteristics are called pathogen-associated molecular patterns or PAMPs, they recognize PAMPs using various receptor types including toll-like receptors. At this point I need to talk briefly about a process called phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is the process that macrophages and other phagocytes like neutrophils use in order to destroy pathogens. So what happens is once they've recognized the pathogen they start to wrap their cell membrane around that pathogen, and absorb them to within inside their cell, the pathogen is then left inside something called a phagosome. This phagosome fuses with surrounding lysosomes, that provide digestive enzymes that then break down that pathogen destroying it, and also processing all of the components into harmless waste products. If the invading pathogens are harmless enough that the macrophages can deal with them alone, then they're cleared and it goes no further. When the attacking army is too large, the macrophages require assistance, so they release cytokines, which are signaling proteins that function similarly to local hormones and raise the alarm of an infection in the surrounding area. This results in a process known as inflammation. Inflammation is one of the most important actions of these cytokines is to recruit and activate more cells of the immune system such as, macrophages, monocytes and neutrophils. Monocytes are precursors to macrophages that float around in the blood once they enter tissues. They differentiate into macrophages and can then carry out all the processes. Macrophages normally carry out neutrophils or another type of phagocyte that circulate in the blood and can enter the tissues and help by destroying invading pathogens. The inflammatory response also involves a number of other processes that help to contain and fight the infection. These are vasodilatation increased vascular permeability. Mast activation and degranulation releasing more cytokines that further stimulate the inflammatory response activation of the clotting system and activation of the canin system. Inflammation itself actually stimulates macrophages and neutrophils to secrete more cytokines notably chemicals called interleukins this is known as the acute phase response and it leads to a more systemic inflammatory response. This involves sending cytokines specifically interleukin 1 to the brain to tell it to produce a fever that leads to high temperatures that are poorly tolerated by many pathogens and cause reduced appetite and lethargy so that the person conserves more energy that can be used to fight the infection. It also involves sending interleukin-6 to the liver to produce acute phase protein that act to something called opsonin. Remember this word because we'll talk about opsonins in a minute. Additionally interleukin-8 is released that recruits and activates more neutrophils such as interleukin-2 and interleukin-12, activate natural killer cells or NK cells, and tumor necrosis factor alpha is released that does all of these effects by itself as I just mentioned. I want to take a quick look at opsonins as these are very important in the immune system. 
Opsonins are complex molecules that attach themselves to pathogens and make it easier for macrophages and neutrophils to recognize and phagocytose that pathogen. I think of them a bit like a fork that spears the pathogen so that macrophage can attach to the other end of the fork and then use it to eat the pathogen. An example of an opsonin in that you may have heard of is C-reactive protein or CRP. CRP is produced by the liver in response to interleukin-6 and we actually measure the level of CRP in our patients to assess how much inflammation there is in the body and it can be a really good indicator of the severity of the infection that our patient is suffering. With so that summarizes the innate immune system a generalized system that recognizes and responds to an invading pathogen by causing an inflammatory response and recruiting cells that destroy the pathogens by phagocytosis. Next let's look briefly at the complement system. The complement system works alongside the innate and the specific immune system to help them destroy pathogens. This involves a series of complement proteins labeled C1 to C9. Once a complement system is triggered the proteins start to activate each other in something called the complement cascade. Various products of the complement cascade have important functions such as acting as opsonins triggering further information and directly attacking and destroying the pathogens. The complement system is triggered in one of three ways the lectin and the alternative pathway are activated directly by pathogens, the classical pathway is activated by antibody antigen complexes that arise from the specific immune system, and that brings us nicely on to looking at the function of the specific immune system. The specific immune system involves two characters the T and the B cells, these are both types of lymphocyte they are free to float around the lymphatic system and the blood but they spend most of their time in the lymph node. And the mucosa associated lymphoid tissue. Think of these lymphoid tissues as army barracks that are full of soldiers, they are all sat around waiting to get word of an enemy that they've specifically been trained to fight. Each pathogen has molecules that are unique to them they're known as antigens. Each T cell has T cell receptors that are specific to a single type of antigen, there are millions of distinct T and B cells that are all specific to a single type of antigen because B cells carry antibodies on their cell membrane that, like T cell receptors, are unique to a single type of antigen. When an infection is caused by a new pathogen, the T and B cells that are specific to that pathogen must be alerted. The problem is that the infection is occurring in a completely different location, such as lymph nodes, and the dendritic cells, which act as messengers, pick up the antigens at the site of the invasion, display them on their cell surface, and then transport them into the lymphatic tissue through the blood and lymphatic system. All of the T and B cells examine the antigen while they are present to determine whether they recognize it. If they do, they become activated. So the specific immune response starts with the dendritic cell presenting the antigens on their HLA class 2 molecules to the CD4 cells these, CD4 cells which are a type of T cell then proliferate and become T helper cells the T helper cells present antigens on their HLA class 1 molecule that can be recognized by CD8 cells, another type of T cell, they also secrete cytokines that are responsible for making the CD8 cells proliferate and differentiate into cytotoxic T cells. These T helper cells also release cytokines that stimulate B cells to proliferate and differentiate into plasma cells that can release large quantities of antibodies, and memory B cells that hang around as part of the immune memory. To respond quickly and future inflections with that specific pathogen the T helper cells also travel to areas of infection and secrete cytokines that help to recruit monocytes and macrophages to the infected tissue and activate the macrophages to cause inflammation and start the process of phagocytosis. Cytotoxic T cells are responsible for killing cells that have been infected by pathogens such as virally infected cells. To do this they need to attach themselves to the infected cell via the T cell receptor in the HLA class 1 molecule expressing the relevant antigen protein on the infected cell once they are attached to the virally infected cell. They have the killing mechanisms that they can choose from. The first is called granule exocytosis where they basically spray the infected cell with enzymes that destroy the membrane and lead to cell lysis and cell death. The second is they can activate the fast molecule. The fast molecule is like a self-destruct switch. That once it's activated it causes the cell to undergo apoptosis. Plasma cells and antibodies are an essential part of the specific immune system. Plasma cells are B cells that have differentiated and become antibody producing cells and their job is to produce tons of antibodies that are specific to the invading pathogen, these antibodies are proteins that are shaped like a Y, one end is variable in shape to match different antigens whereas the other end is fixed in shape and can be recognized by many cells of the immune system. These proteins float around the blood and attach themselves to antigens that match their specific variable region on these antibodies which has helped the immune system fight pathogens in a number of different ways. Firstly they can attach themselves to enemy toxins which themselves are antigens and neutralize their toxic effect, secondly antibodies can attach themselves to the receptors of viruses and bacteria and prevent them from carrying out their function, for example it can stop viruses from being able to recognize cells that it may want to invade and therefore prevent the viral invasion of that cell. 
Thirdly, a process known as agglutination occurs when antibodies bind to infections and then group together to restrict the pathogen's spread. Lastly, some pathogens can be extremely challenging for neutrophils and macrophages' basic receptors to identify. Antibodies have opsonin-like properties that are highly specific to the invading pathogen and by attaching themselves to that pathogen acting as opsonins. They can help the macrophages and neutrophils to recognize and destroy that pathogen. That summarizes an overview of the immune system. I hope you found this video helpful. It was created as part of a set of videos that covers everything you need to know about the immune system. So go ahead and check out the rest of those videos if you like this one then please like, comment and subscribe for more videos. And I'll see you in the next video.